In this lesson, we're going to learn how to connect steps together using something called step exports. You can think of step exports as the glue that ties together the output from one step to the input of another step. Let's pick up where we left off in the previous lesson. We created a workflow that has a single Google Sheet action to add a row to a spreadsheet each time this workflow is executed. And just to recap, we open up the configure portion of the step and we can see right here that the value is pre-configured to say hi from Pipedream every single time we run this action. It's neat that we've automated this, but it'd be even neater if it was a little bit more dynamic, right? So let's take a look at the other steps in our workflow. Well, only one other step in our workflow, which is the HTTP trigger. If you open up the results panel within a given step, you can see this subsection called exports, which is, you probably guessed, the step exports from this particular step. Now here is all of the data that is produced by this step. Let's start with the very top portion of the data, where we can see that there's this namespace called steps. And the very first property within steps is the word trigger. Now, that's not a coincidence that the name of this step is also called trigger. This is how you navigate through the steps data. Every single step has a unique name and it maps to a property under the steps object. Underneath the trigger export, we're gonna see two larger objects. The first is called context, which is like the metadata around the event. And the second is the actual event itself. Now, since this is an HTTP trigger webhook, we're going to see a lot of HTTP request details within the event. Things like the method of the request, the actual IP address that performed the request, and the full URL and headers associated with it. Let's wire up the trigger HTTP request details to our Google Sheet. Let's start with the IP address. We can get this data in two different ways. We can start from the source of the data, which is our trigger here, and we can copy the path, which will copy the path to this particular data point. So now it's copied to our clipboard, and we can return to our Google Sheet action, and we can replace this value by copying and pasting our clipboard into this values field. You can see that it added two extra brackets around the path to our data point the client IP address. But we're telling Pipedream with the two brackets to evaluate as that as JavaScript, not as plain text. So let's test it out. We'll click the test button to run that particular step. And we can go back to our Google Sheet here and see that it indeed added the client IP address from the HTTP request that triggered our workflow in the first place. Very cool. Let's go back because I mentioned to you earlier that there is more than one way to reference a step export besides copying and pasting it from the source step. Instead, we can use what's called the object explorer within the property. So down below, you can see the same exact type of interface from the source above, but we'll just go through and copy the full URL. And that added the URL to our Google Sheet action. I'm gonna go ahead and re-add the client IP address because this is an array prop field. We can add many values and let's retest it. Heading back to our Google Sheet, we can now see that we have both the full URL that was accessed as well as the client IP address dynamically inserted by the workflow. So just to recap, props are like the inputs of a step. Exports are the outputs and you can reference any other steps exports across your workflow. It doesn't matter what kind of trigger you use or what kind of action you use. It could be a tweet, it could be updating a sheet, it could be a webhook. You can tie them together using step exports. And this includes code steps, which I'll show you in a later video. 